So hello and welcome to this video on the wrong electronics vector space. Let's check out some patches from the video before we get into it. I'm going to start just by reading the first little paragraph from the manual. The vector space was designed as a way to increase the usability of your modulation sources by combining three of them in 17 different combinations to give you 17 CV outputs, which are all interrelated but unique. By itself, vector space does very little, but combined with random voltages, envelopes, sequences, LFOs, joysticks, and more modulation sources, it lets your patches get very deep very quickly. It's 100% analog and it will process signals well into and well above audio rates from minus 10 volts up to plus 10 volts. We have three inputs, I, J and K. These can be bipolar or switched if they're just positive signals. And by adding the offsets needed to make this work with positive signals, we can actually start to see how some of this is related and these different voltage levels shown on these different LEDs. We've got cube outputs, which I'm gonna put the image up from the manual, which I marked in red. We've got plane outputs and sphere outputs. And the eight cube outs give a bipolar response. It's green when it's positive, the LEDs, and it's red when it's negative. These are all eight different combinations and different phase mixes of the three inputs. And it gives you a fairly easy to understand combination of the input sources. The six plane outputs are located on the intersections of the unit sphere inside the cube and have a bipolar goldish colour for positive and red for negative on those LEDs. These outputs are a combination of rectified versions of two of the inputs summed within or out of phase versions of the third. So we actually start to get, if we're thinking of audio, extra harmonics, rectification giving octave up effects. There's a lot to go at. The three sphere outputs are located in a diagonal line in the centre of the module. The centre output of sphere contains a sum of all the rectified inputs. And this voltage corresponds to the net distance of the point from the centre point of the cube and is indicated by a pinky purple LED to its bottom right. The negative sphere output is located on the other side of this LED and outputs a negative version of the sphere output. And the final output, the unsphere, is located just above and to the left of the sphere output and is in indicated by a white LED. So that might sound like a lot of jargon. Basically, three things in audio or CV, 17 related, interesting, different things out. Without getting into any more technical details, let's get into some patches and check out what it can do. So before we dive into the other patches, I've had this set up and filmed for something else and a track and patch that I'm working on I'm going to release later. But the vector space here is controlling absolutely everything from this scattery, glitchy morphogene reel, this kick and hi-hat, which are really sparse. I'm using an LFO to create a pattern on a quantizer and the trigger out of the quantizer is moving a clock divider irregularly and that's what's giving us this little percussion thing. We've got this bass drone. Sorry for knocking the camera. We've got the bass drone and we've got this gestural melodic thing. Through some tube distortion, there's a ton of stuff going on, it's, but this is all free looping envelopes into vector space. Nearly all of the outputs patched to modulate effects and sounds and sample manipulation and granular stuff and VCAs and everything is a vector space output, which is really, really cool. It's a great way to work and create generative patches and then perform around them as I have for a track that's coming later. But for now, We'll have a quick few seconds of this and then back to the video. So 
for this patch, I have three random voltages coming into vector space. These are coming out of these three cables, one with the black ends. These two are being used for modulation. And these are going into a quantizer. And I could just use the three inputs and the three and these three outs and not actually use vector space I and mean, just get random stepped voltages. This is sample and hold on the way in varied versions on these outputs into my quantizer but i get lots of other related information such as these signals related on the pitch that i can use for modulation and any other output and i can move these around for varying behaviors as well so i have three sounds panned slightly left in the middle and slightly right so make sure you've got headphones on and if i pull their volt per octaves out let's just check everything is in tune It's kind of close enough for us. And then we're just going to plug my volt proctors back into each of these sound sources. So I can choose varying outputs. We're going to get different behaviors so it's not three random voltages into three sources or three quantizers then into my oscillators the three coming in dictate what's happening on these vector space outputs bit of a crunchy delay in the background so it's a great way of redistributing information around a patch I could take other outputs and modulate other sources. If I had more actual audio sources and synth voices, we could have more pitch outputs going into quantizers. It's great just to have random stepped information go to all these outputs. And here I'm using it for pitch. So again, this patch is in stereo. Again, with some sounds panned hard left and slightly right, and sound in the center. Basically three oscillators into three filters. And their modulation is coming from these three outputs. And this patch is the ultimate LFO logic patch in the manual. And I just want to break this patch down after letting you listen to it, and we'll go through building up this kind of huge monster of LFO modulation from three inputs. So let's just take a quick listen, and we'll get into it. Okay, so let's start by actually taking some of these outputs away. We've got a single LFO coming in. I'm going to mute my sounds. Actually get rid of some of the modulation. And let's just go through what this is actually doing. Single input. And all these outputs are different. Varying rates, varying different kind of offsets. This is weighted towards a much higher voltage. That's much lower. That's double speed. Like a fully rectified version. So when I bring my other voices in, and I'll unmute them and put their modulation in, still just a single LFO input. So we get quadrature outputs and a whole range of other outputs as well. Let's bring back some more modulation. So three LFOs, and these are the LFOs on the data screen. And we've 17 outputs to play with.
So here's another patch from the manual, and this is the 3D Vector Synthesis patch. And this is a riff on the Sequential Circuits Profit VS. And what we've got is five outputs to five VCAs, and we can kind of spin around this space between different waveforms. Now the manual suggests using the unsphere out, which in simple terms always kind of has the highest voltage, and that's going to control this sine wave. That I can just cut off. Quite a lot of reverb in the patch, but we're just listening to drone in waves. And this creates a kind of center tone for us to work with and kind of pan around with this vector synthesis. Now there's no actual panning in stereo, this is all in mono, but we're going to pan around the different sounds. So turning every channel on, I've got two voltages coming in. Let's just listen to what happens when I raise one of these inputs. So this is five sounds into five VCAs, five outputs. And these inputs, as they spin around this bottom cube, Now this doesn't have to be manually played, these could be LFOs or envelopes or anything you want to put in there and use this alongside the VCAs, some kind of giant crossfader. If we had more VCAs, we could modulate the third input and I'll just show you that on an LFO, modulating it to move between the top and bottom of the cube. So my movements are having an effect now, but this LFO is also having an effect as well. It's fun to recreate this vector synthesis. We can have all these in-between points with these different 17 outputs. As I've said in other patches, there's just a ton of related outs to patch to anything in the patch. So this patch is based around the Tambral Garden patch in the manual. And I'll overlay that so you can have a look, but go check out the manual afterwards. Just like the left, right, mid side, mid side, left, right, the manual's fantastic. And that's where these graphics that I've overlaid have come from. So I have three oscillators coming in. These are tuned to a root third and fifth. This has all been sequenced and controlled elsewhere. And I'm using different outputs to give me different audio tones, different timbres, timbres, timbres. <laughs> um, and I'm using these to create the whole patch and then clocking things off the back of that. So let's break it down and get into what's going on. So just droning away, here's my output. I'm going to remove these ones and we'll come to those shortly. Because we've got this root third fifth and the way that all these outputs work, all 17, we're going to get different tones. It's going to pull out different harmonics. The triangle waves are coming in and this is a fairly standard kind of three triangles tuned to a chord sound. Get an octave up effect there with, with some upper harmonics as well. And listen to the difference. The harmonics is pulling out. So I'm going to take two of these in stereo, which is going to be this one. These are currently being just triggered by an envelope when we're going to start to build this patch back up. This is hard panned left, but then listen to this one. So we've got a bit of a stereo image now. These are hard panned. They're all from the same free triangle wave tuned to the chord. but different tones. We've got a stereo image there. This one. Let's start to re-trigger this from an envelope. Going to add in a bit of crunchy PT delay, because why not? So 
So all these different tones just by mixing my audio in the vector space and then letting the different harmonics and octave up and that kind of clipped harmonics that we get from that one. I've then got some drums. And I'm going to set the pitch sequence going to these oscillates again. And you can get into feedback patching with this, patching things back into itself, out into other VCAs, faders. You could use it alongside the LR, MS, MS, LR. And a whole range of things you could do with vector space. And it's really good to see Wrong Electronics doing this with the mid-side module and vector space. I'm keen to see what's coming next with this kind of wide open, mad possibility type modules that kind of blank canvases for your patches. There's other suggestions in the manual, lots of other ways you can use this thing. This has just been a handful of patches and how I've been using it. Exploring audio is great. All the CV stuff, the generative stuff, is really fun. Thanks for watching this video. Hit like, subscribe, comment. Go support me on Patreon if you'd like extra content and would like to support this content. If not, keep watching and cheers.